Good morning, everybody. What a wonderful morning. It's Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, and it's time for Morning Manna. Got a word for you. As you know, I have a word for you on this morning. We're in this whole series of Pentecost. Sunday is coming. We're talking about the power, personality of a Pentecost church and a Pentecost person. So I got to, I got a word for you. And this whole week, we're dealing with this. And so uh, you already know we're going to go to Acts 2, Acts 2 and 8. But let me give you the ground rules. If it's your first time joining us, thank you for being a part of our community and our family. It's the Morning Manor family. We gather about this time every weekday morning, and I have a word for you. And this is the way we flow. It's going to be the text, the talk, and a takeaway. I'm going to give you a text. I'm going to give you a little bit of a talk about the text, and then there's going to be a takeaway that you can apply to your life. Now, what are you supposed to do? You already know. You got to give the hearts and the likes. You got to share. You got to do. You got to subscribe. You got to follow, and you got to do some watch uh, parties as well. That's what you do. I got a word for you. We got a partnership here. It's a community with us coming together with Morning Manor. Got a word for you on this morning. And as you know, as I've already said, we're in this whole series uh, about power, personality of a church, personality of a Pentecost person, just however you want to look at it. And I'm dealing with that this whole week. Why? Because Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. It is when God gave the church the power to deal with the world that it was supposed to go and to carry out the mission of the church. The church couldn't do it without power. And if there's ever a time we need power, it's right now. Okay, here you go. Let's get into this word. Acts 2 and 8. Acts 2 and 8. And it says this, then how is it that each of us hear them in our own language? How is it that each of us hear them in our own language? Now in Acts 2 and 4, we hear and we get the word that uh, the Holy Spirit came down, the baptism came in the room, it filled them, and there were like tongues of fire, like tongues of fire. So let's deal with taming your tongue. Tame your tongue. Now, I, I, I'm, I just am fascinated with this text. 17 different nationalities hear the 120 that were in the upper room hear them in their own language. There is a spiritual phenomenon going on here. It's gifting of the Holy Spirit. But the question needs to be raised, and I believe that the revelation in the text is, how is it that each of them, 17 nationalities, hear them in their own language? Are the people, the disciples, is Mary the mother of Jesus, his brothers, of which we talked about yesterday, they're all in the upper room. Are they all speaking 17 different languages? Or are they speaking in a way that they hear them, the language that they're speaking? Let me say that again. Are they speaking 17 different languages? Or is the Holy Spirit speaking in such a way through them that the hearers hear them in the language that they speak. It's something that we got to dig in the text and look at. Now, I know that they were saying in the text, it says that they spoke in other tongues, that they spoke in other tongues. Now, and, and you already know the text. The text says, were they drunk? 120 people speaking to 17 different nationalities, the Mees, the Frigerians, the Romans, uh, the Gentiles, the Jews, the Judeans, all of these different, that Asia, all of them was coming together. The question is, when the Holy Spirit comes, it tames your tongue so that you might be able to speak. Three things I want to share with you this morning. Three things. One is, just because you're talking doesn't mean anybody knows what you're talking about. Just because you're talking doesn't mean someone hears you. A lot of times we just talk, talk, talk. Don't mean that somebody heard you. There's clear evidence in the text that they were talking and people were hearing them. A lot of times we waste a whole lot of time with a whole lot of speaking. But you ain't saying nothing. 
Why? Here's the second thing. You have to talk in the language of the receiver and not the sender. You have to talk in the language of the receiver and not the sender. It's just like when we have someone who is signing language or doing sign language on the side of the person who is speaking audibly. They're having sign language on the side because the person that's speaking audibly can be saying a whole lot of great things, but because a person who is deaf cannot interpret what they're saying, they need somebody on the side to speak in their language. Gary Chapman has a great book called The Five Love Languages. And, it, and what he says in that is that there are five different love languages and that if, unless you are speaking in the language of the receiver, then what you're saying, they don't feel loved at all. They don't feel loved at all. And so it is in terms of us talking. A lot of times we're talking, ain't nobody hearing because you're not speaking in the language of the receiver. What are the many languages now that we have? Millennial language, Gen X language, Gen Z language. We have boomer language. It's not just a nationality of language. It's that you got to know who you're talking to to speak and use the words that they understand. Here's the third thing that I want to share with you this morning. Words are too expensive for you to talk them away. <laughs> words are too expensive for you to talk them away. Now, I want you to grab this. In the upper room, they get this other language because of the death, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. Remember now, he came in first in John 1.33 to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. All right. He gave his life so that we might be able to communicate to the world. So the words that we use are too expensive. Life and death, you already know. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So why are you wasting words that mean nothing? The only way you can grab a hold of this is, here's the takeaway. Straight talk is talk straight out of the Holy Spirit. Everybody wants to say, you know what, I, girl, I got something to tell you. You know what, let me just share this with you and love and all that. Wait, hold on. Straight talk is talk straight out of the Holy Spirit because my words are too expensive. Christ died for the words that I'm about to use to witness to the love of Christ in the world. My words are too expensive for me to just talk them away. My words are too expensive for me not to have the right language for the receiver that I'm about to share with. So I need to expand your knowledge of the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it is communication that is so powerful. And in Acts 2 and 8, it says everybody that heard them says, I hear them talking to me in the language that I speak. Tame your tongue so you can talk with the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May his face shine upon and give you peace. I'll share with you more about this whole flow of Pentecost. God bless you. Share the manner. Don't be stingy. Don't be greedy. Bye now.